What is going on guys? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So I just wanted to do a quick little trading recap for you guys out there. I uploaded a video earlier this morning at about 9 o'clock a.m. talking about my pre-market watch list, what stocks and ETFs I was watching for today. And I pretty much just wanted to do a follow-up video talking about what stocks I'm watching now as you know, as the day progressed, as the market you know unfolded, and we saw a bunch of a uh, you know a bunch of movement in the stocks that I was talking about earlier in the day. So let's get right into that. But before I do, you know, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So if that's something that you're interested in, and if that's something that you want to follow along with me, you know, in my journey in the stock market. It, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and you know, let's hop right into it. So we see right here, DGAS was the number one ETF that I was watching along with LABU, but LABU actually did not end up playing according to my plan. It has not broken the pattern yet, but you know, we did see a push up to about $96, but it got rejected by that EMA. But first, before I talk about LABU, let's talk a little bit more about DGAS because this is the one that I'm really looking at investing in tomorrow and possibly more on Friday due to the bounce and the hold above the EMA line that we see right here. And for those of you guys that don't know, DGAS is a natural gas ETF and its inverse is a uh, UGAS, ticker symbol UGAZ, and how these work, guys, they trade based upon slash NG, which is the natural gas ETF. And whenever natural gas is going up in price, UGAS is going up in price, but when it's going down in price, DGAS is going down in price. So, you know, once natural gas got rejected by this 180-day SMA indicator that we see here. That's when, you know, my antennas went up and I was like, okay, DGAS could end up being a good play for this week. And we do see that, you know, this SMA indicator acted as a, as a resistance point. It bounced below there. Then it started to break below the EMA line. And now it just broke below the 50-day SMA indicator. So all signs are showing that natural gas is downtrending in price right now. It's trading below all of these different indicators that we use, you know, in order to perform our technical analysis. So now we can take this over to DGAS and see how it's performing in terms of this natural gas pullback. So we see the pullback in natural gas as it got rejected at that 180 day SMA indicator. That's where DGAS bounced here on this 180 day SMA indicator. And from there, you know, it's been pushing up in price. It broke above the EMA line here. And now we see it's hovering right below the 50 day SMA line. And what I'm going to be watching very closely, you know, as the market opens tomorrow and into Friday is if DGAS breaks above this 50 day SMA indicator. And for that to happen, obviously natural gas has to continue this downtrending pattern that it's on. And, you know, if it does break above this, 50 day SMA indicator, that's going to be a full fledged on confirmation that DGAS is in an uptrending pattern. So I did, you know, I did take a smaller position in DGAS, but this is the only, you know, ETF out of the bunch of, of uh, stocks and ETFs I was talking about in my watch list in my morning video that I actually ended up taking a position in. And I ran the scanner and I found some other ones that I wanted to talk about, primarily just one stock that I wanted to talk about. And I'm going to cover that one later in this video. But, you know, I took a smaller position in DGAS, ticker symbol DGAZ, as it is showing a sign of an uptrend pattern here as it bounced above the 180 day SMA indicator. And I'm going to set an alert at about $26.25. Let's quickly set an alert there because once it breaks above that particular price point, it should be above that 50 day SMA indicator. And I want Think or Swim to, uh, you know, notify me whenever that that happens and if that happens so we're going to put here 2625 price mark is at or above 2625 and you know create and now we see this mark here it created the uh, the the alert for me and once it breaks above here if it does break above there that's when i'll be notified that dgas is pushing up in price and that's the whole idea here guys we want to get in once it breaks above this 50 day sma indicator so we can ride up some profits from about 2650 up to previous resistance points at about $28. And, you know, that offers a solid, solid amount of potential for profit from about 5 
to 8%. And if it does continue to go up in price, more profit is going to be rolling in, you know, with DGAS. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of DGAS. Let's quickly go over Facebook, ticker symbol FB. Obviously, this is one of the most talked about stocks the past one to two weeks in the stock market due to this huge 20% pullback that it took. And this one has not yet shown any signs of a push up. But, you know, I, I invested in Facebook at about $170 and I'm planning on holding this as a longer term investment. So this does not worry me whatsoever. Anything, you know, in the 160s is going to be another buying range in my personal opinion as a long-term investor but you know just to quickly go over in terms of technical analysis this stock has yet to break above the EMA line as we see here you know the EMA line is acting as a resistance point and uh, pretty much it's been consolidating around 170 to 175 for this past week and we do see it went down to the 160s Earlier this week, I did not end up buying more shares of Facebook at this price point. But, you know, if it does dip back down to the 160s, I'm definitely most most definitely going to be putting more shares, more money into this into the stock because I like it and I love the company, you know, long term. But, you know, it's still it's still downtrending in price. It has yet to show an upwards momentum. It has not broken above the EMA line. It has not broken above the 50-day SMA line. And, you know, let's say you want to swing trade Facebook. You're not really looking to invest in Facebook long term. And by long term, I mean like one to two to three years. You know, you could wait for a break above the EMA line so you mitigate your risk in terms of it you know, being in a full-fledged uptrend pattern instead of it being below these indicators that we use, right? If you want to swing trade it, let's say you wait until it breaks above $175 and, you know, at that point it would be above the EMA line, it would be above the 50-day SMA indicator and maybe at that point you would feel more comfortable in terms of risk management to, to you know, put some money into Facebook. So, you know, I'm going to be investing more money into Facebook in the 160s if it does end up falling back down to the 160s. And most likely in the one in the high 170s once it confirms, you know, the uptrend pattern. So I'm going to set an alert right here on Facebook. Let's set that alert at about $175, right? Let's see. Actually, let's set it at 176 because I don't think it actually cracked 176 this past week, but I do think it cracked 175. So I really want it to, I really want Thinkorswim to just alert me once it breaks above, you know, previous resistance points. And as of now, I think 176 or 175, you know, is a common resistance level for the past week on Facebook. So that's a quick little alert here on Facebook. Again, holding this one long term, anything in the 160s is, is a buying range in my personal opinion. And I will be putting more money into the stock at that point. So we ran the scanner earlier and I found another one that could be a good play for the next coming weeks. And this one is ticker symbol HR. And for those of you guys that are not familiar with my personal swing trading strategy, I like looking at stocks and ETFs that are at dip by opportunities that have confirmed the bounce, but are still on uptrending patterns. So we see this stock HR, it topped off here on the 180 day chart, judging off this chart itself. It topped off here at $33 bottomed off at about $26 and we see a strong a very strong support level at around 26 2650 it bounced there once twice three times four times five times so this is a very valid support level for ticker symbol HR and what we notice here is once it bounced the last time at that 2650 support level it shot above the EMA line. It shot above the 50-day and the 180-day SMA indicators. And, you know, it's pretty much been uptrending from there. We see it started to shoot up. The EMA line was acting as a support level rather than a resistance level as it has been in the past. And here it was kind of just trading horizontally. So this one would have been a nice, you know, this one would have been a nice play in and out here from the resistance point or excuse me the support point from 2650 up to resistance points at about 28 28 dollars so you know this one offered some nice potential and some nice play in this horizontal pattern that we see here but once it broke above that you know, it was trending above the EMA line, the EMA line acting as a support level. And we notice here it bounced again at the 50 day SMA indicator, which just confirms further that HR, you know, is starting to push up. It's not looking to downtrend and start to push below the indicators that we have here, but instead is starting to push above them. And it's been consolidating right around, you know, the 50 day SMA indicator for the past couple of trading days. So what we're going to be watching at and with particular in ticker symbol HR 
is if it does break above this resistance point, you know, right at about $29 to $30, because we do see here it bottomed off, or excuse me, it topped off at about $30. Here saw a nice little healthy pullback back to about $28, and now it's testing that same resistance point. So if it does end up breaking above here, this one could end up being a runner and a solid swing trade for the next week or two. So I'm just going to set an alert very quickly. Let's say now it's at about $29.78. That's where it ended up closing today. So let's say we set an alert at about $30.50. So Thinkorswim notifies us whenever it breaks above $30.50, and at that point, it's going to be, you know, confirming the uptrending pattern even further. It's going to be break, broken above that resistance point at about $29.50 to $30. And, you know, that's a very good sign that, you know, HR, ticker symbol HR, is going to continue this uptrending pattern that it's on. So we say price mark is at or above. So it notifies us when it's at or above $30.50. Now we hit create and boom. And the, and the awesome thing about these alerts, guys, is that you can just have your platform up throughout the day, and it'll 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 uh, make a dinging sound whenever you know whenever one of your alerts goes off, and then you're gonna have a nice big notification right here telling you that whatever uh, you know whatever stock uh, it triggered the alert. And, you know, that way you can just click on it, go back to that stock and really just analyze it further in terms of putting more money into it. Now, to quickly look at LABU, this is another inverse ETF. I was talking about this one earlier in my uh, in my morning video. And this one, guys, it got rejected by the EMA line. It has not really shown uh, the, the confirmation that we're looking for in terms of it uptrending in price. We do see the candlesticks here on the 180-day chart. They're still trending below that EMA line, and the EMA line is, is seeming to act as a resistance point. So this is not really too attractive in my personal opinion quite yet. But, you know, tomorrow, let's say it opens up at about 95 and starts to push up into the 96 97 dollar price point you know labu would be a nice attractive play in terms of it you know breaking that pattern of a of a, of a downtrending pattern as it is as it is right now we see like again like i said it's rejected by the ema line but we want to see it trending above the ema line and starting to push up towards this 180 day sma indicator and i'm going to set an alert here on LABU because I think my alert was broken today because it did crack $96. I had an alert at $96 earlier today and we do see labu opened up at about 96 dollars or no no at about 93 dollars pushed up to 96 and from there it got rejected by the ema line on the 180 day chart and it's been downtrending in price you know from there and we closed again at about 93 dollars right around where we opened up so this this one you know it was pretty flat throughout the day in terms of percentage growth we do see it was up about 0.6 percent but that's not too crazy obviously and uh you know only up 63 cents and we do really want to see that upwards push into the 96 97 dollar price point range so i'm going to set a nice little uh alert here again at $96.50 this time because we do see it went to $96.30. So I want to see it break that $96.30 price point push up maybe in, even into $96.75 before I tune into my tune in my attention, you know, to ticker symbol LABU. So I'm going to set that alert right here, $96.75. And just to quickly go over LABU, why I'm interested in possibly investing in it and if it does break above this, this particular alert that we just set is because of this horizontal pattern that it's offering right here. We see it's right at a support level as we have drawn out here, and this is what we were talking about earlier in today's video, we see it bounced here at about $88, $87. It bounced here again at about $87. And again, it topped off here, you know, at about 110 to 115. So what this offers here, guys, from $87 up to about 115, that's 20% profit that we're able to grab and hopefully grab a portion of that profit you know as swing traders so again i did not get in at 87 dollars. obviously i'm waiting for that confirmation because if we got in here without the confirmation of the bounce you know it could go either way that's really just a gamble in my personal opinion and you know i like waiting for the bounce and the confirmation of the uptrend and you know 
That's exactly what we're going to be doing. And patience is key, guys, especially if you're a swing trader. I get it. If you're a day trader, you know, you're more in, in, in tune with the intraday plays. I'm not really into day trading too much. I do day trade sometimes when I find potential in particular stocks and ETFs like I did yesterday with Run. But, you know, mostly I'm a swing trader and I look at patterns that accommodate my particular style of trading in the stock market, which is swing trading. So, you know, waiting for that break above there, that's very key in terms of LABU. And uh, it's pretty much just to wrap up this video, we're going to be talking about BAK. And I was talking about how I wanted to see a pullback in BAK and a bounce above this EMA line before I consider investing some money into this particular stock. Because again, you know, this one fits my criteria in terms of it bouncing and, you know, recovering from that bounce and starting to push back up above these indicators and really confirming that it's pushing back up, reversing and, and, and uh, starting to form an uptrend pattern, right? We see a bounce here at $21 pushed above the EMA line, pushed above the SMA indicator. It bounced here again at the SMA indicator, the 50-day SMA indicator, which just further confirmed that, you know, this was acting as a support point rather than a resistance point. And that's very key in confirming uptrend patterns. And we see it broke above this 180 SMA indicator here. That was a further, you know, confirming point that it was pushing up in price. And the EMA line here was acting as a resistance, or excuse me, as a support level. And now we're seeing some red candlesticks form. And this is exactly what I want to happen with BAK. And what I'm going to be looking at closely is, you know, if it does bounce on this EMA line right around like $28, $28.50 before I end up taking a position in it. So I'm going to set an alert on BAK. Let's say I'll set an alert at 28.50 and I'm going to set a different type of alert here on BAK. I actually want Think or Swim to notify me whenever BAK breaks below $28.50 because I'm going to be watching BAK closely and I want it to notify me as it gets closer to this EMA line. And obviously guys, if BAK opens up green tomorrow and continues to push up, this, you know, this alert here is going to be pretty much irrelevant. So, but just just, you know, just to set it for you guys and you know just to show you how to set a different type of alert we want it to mark is at or below $28.50 so what this is going to do is it's going to notify us when uh, when a BAK breaks below $28 and if it breaks below $28.50 so I hope you guys enjoyed the video I'm standing up now because my computer was about to die I had to run to the outlet so I'm not so I don't lose any of the footage but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did feel free to drop a like leave a comment subscribe follow me on Instagram and Twitter the links are down below in my description I post there pretty much daily especially on Instagram I'm very 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 active on Instagram so if you guys want to shoot me a DM there talk about stocks talk about life talk about entrepreneurship anything you guys want to talk about feel free to just shoot me a DM on Instagram and we can chat. So again, make sure to do your own research when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. Do not buy or sell any stocks or ETFs based off of my opinion or anybody else's opinion at that matter because that's not how you're going to become a self-sufficient trader and investor over time because you really want to be able to build these skills on your own so you can go out on your own and invest and trade in the stock market and pretty much just make money on your own guys you don't want people spoon feeding you stocks and ETFs and, and just pretty much buying them on other people's opinions that's just not going to work out for you you're going to end up losing money trust me on that so I hope you guys found some value in this video let's make some money today peace